Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to show you an extract from a presentation that I did to my team that it's all about helping us test better our application thanks to snapshot testing. The whole idea was how to get here 100% of unit test coverage. The important thing is that I always say that the, it's not about the numbers, the numbers is not what really matters. The numbers can be confusing and they don't show the reality. Because for example, you can easily get 100% test coverage if you exercise the code paths, but you still can miss a lot of scenarios that are not coverage and the numbers don't show that. But let's be honest, the 100% it's really nice. It's an indication of what we need to aim for. But the important thing here is make it easy to cover all the scenarios that our requirements need. In this video, I'm gonna show you a little introduction to our homegrown components UI framework that I call HubKit. The Android team doesn't like it, so they call it uh, the compositor, but I prefer HubKit because it's how it started. The idea was to make it easy for us to make what we call the hub screens of different sections of the app, but it has been working super nice. In my opinion, it has helped us tremendously on improving the velocity of the team, make it way nicer to work with UI. Right now you can see it on hub screens, on lists, on detail screens that are dynamic. It's, it's super nice to work with. And we'll see, maybe Apple gives us something similar. We can all keep praying and wishing that Apple wakes up and gives us a declarative UI framework someday. But for now, this is what we do. So then I'm gonna talk to you about the problems we have with the current way we test, like basically normal unit testing with assets and expectations. Then I'm gonna show you what improvements we are gaining by adopting the snapshot testing library. So HubKit, as I was saying, HubKit, it was my personal take on a declarative UI framework. And I started developing it for news screens on the app like some months ago. And as I said, right now, it's basically in many, many places on the app. So it actually turned out to be quite nice. It's not a huge departure from native UI kit. Basically, it's baked by a collection view and the developers still need to write the collection view cells. I'm not making a new UI system. It's basically a layer on top of it that helps us with declarative definitions of... I haven't gone super far. For example, there is no operators or stuff like that. I keep it down to the ground to make it accessible for everybody. It's quite simple in that respect, but still it gives us what I really care about, which is a declarative system that you can choose right once and forget about maintaining state and stuff like that. So the main idea is that the framework calls load on our view model and that view model does something and eventually it gives us back a array of components. Then the framework takes care of putting that on the screen. Quite simple. And to be honest, the framework, it's, it's not that big. It's basically one view controller with some, with some logic and state management. But that's just half of the story because the other half is like the user interacts with these UI elements. And this interaction gets delegated into the into the component, of course, because the component is the one that owns the UI. And here is when we have different types of components. We have components that they are specific enough that they know how to deal with this interaction. For example, we have a component that knows how to show a phone number for a retailer, for example. And when the user clicks on the phone number, it knows that it needs to do a phone call using the, the phone APIs. But then we have other ones, to be honest, the vast majority of them, that are more generic, that they accept different types of data and or even nested components. So these components, they don't know really what to do themselves and they actually delegate back into the view model. And then each screen can customize this functionality. But one of the important things is that the view models need to be like a black box. Basically what we care about is that they give us back this array of components and that's super important for testing because that's what we need to test. That the array of components that we receive is the one that we expect. We can write small functions or helpers or different mappers to data models to components, but it should be a black box. This is not what we really care about. This is implementation details. What we really want is just to make sure that the components that we receive are the ones we expect. So just to give you an idea of how this component system works, I have here a screen which is part of our well-being feature and it's basically a screen that shows you a question for a bigger questionnaire. And this screen is, in terms of fetching data, it's quite simple because it already has the data past the initialization time. So that's why you can see the load function I was talking before it doesn't do anything special. It literally already has the data. So it just calls the render function that it's a convenience that we have on every screen. And it basically is the function that 
maps from the, the data, in this case, this question block, and it gives us back the array of components. And as you can see, this is quite declarative. We have this hub object that is like basically a nice interface to create components. It's absolutely not, not needed. You can actually just return an array of components yourself if you want, but this has some nice additions to it. Like you can add a component based on a condition. So we have some of these additions here just to make it nicer to read and to write. But as you can see, there is not much to it. You just make this array of components, you return them, and that's it. So one important question is, what should we test? Because of course, in a software code base, you can test pretty much everything if you want. But uh, there is a point where you start getting diminishing returns. As a company, we, w we are basically releasing every two weeks. We're constantly shipping new features, proving uh, the code base and stuff. So we cannot really test anything we want just for the sake of it. So we need to focus on testing the actual parts that are critical for, for us, for the user, for the company. We need to test that the requirements are met and the business logic is actually covered. Usually, one of the first parts is retrieving the data from the server. We need to make sure that we're actually making the requests that are expected with the right parameters and that we parse the models correctly and all that stuff. That's something that I'm not going to be covering today because we, I mean, there are other systems to deal with it. The most important part related to our component framework is that we actually test that the components that are returned based on the data that the server is giving us. And then, as I was saying before, there is the extra part that you need to test the component interaction. With that said, let's see what problems we have with the current way we test. One of the important things for me is that we don't make public things that they're actually private, they are just implementation details, and that we don't make that just for the sake of testing. So for example, here you have another example, which is part of a screen on our perks section. Here we actually split the things into a separate function just to make it easier to read here. So I know that with the redemption and I can build these components that are the, the features that this redemption type gives me. We separate it here in a, in a private function and we have the tendency to try to make this public because obviously this private function has some logic that will be interesting to try it and everything. But that misses the picture, which is that we actually care about making sure that the screen gives us the components that we want not that a specific part is correct. We want the entire thing to be correct. With this in mind, we want to be nice. We want to test the component creation, the entire of it. And we actually try to do it. But oh man, oh man, it is painful. Seriously, even for me, even for me. So what are the things that we have been testing since we started to use this framework? Well, we started by, let's make sure that the number of components that I'm expecting is actually the correct one. And this is trivial, so it avoids some of the pain, but then it's too basic because the count, first of all, it's confusing because we have actually components for separators or headers. Even if visually looks like one, you actually have different components with the same background, for example, and no separation. The number of components that you have on the test doesn't really match what you actually are expecting. And then the count doesn't give confidence. It gives a lot of false positives. If you reorder something by mistake, the test doesn't catch that. If you replace one component by another, the test doesn't catch that. Especially the data from the components, which is what the user actually interacts with and what the user actually sees, that's not tested. So we are maybe mapping the data to the component in a not correct way. To improve this, we actually started testing the types from the components are the ones that we expect. And that's an improvement because at least we know the types are there. But because testing everything, including separators, is quite a pain in this way, we started just okay, let me test that this is there, not that everything is what I'm expecting. And then you start having weird things like these contains or filters. So we start having logic on the tests just to get to the point that I just need to check what I want. And if you don't have this logic, then you start having tests that access specific indexes, expecting the component to be at that index all the time. And when that changes, for example, if you add a separator, like then all your indexes are wrong and maintaining the test, it's, it's a huge inconvenience. So when I said, please, can you test the component data? Like everybody, including me, I'm like, yes, I guess we could. And then we start thinking, maybe we should do it in a different way because it's a pain. This is just to say that even if we're trying to write tests, the reality is that it's painful. And if you don't want to make it painful, the tests that you end up having, they are not enough. Instead, what if we had a nice solution uh, for iOS that gives us what we want? And what we want is to write tests easily. 
we don't want to be matching indexes, we don't want to be type checking, we don't want to be in a difficult position if we later do a change. And this is super important because a lot of people focuses on writing tests and making that nice, but then as soon as the app starts evolving and starts changing, you have two jobs, rewrite all the app and rewrite all the tests. And that's a huge pain. What if I said that there are checks for types that happen automatically? What if we could check for the index automatically? What if we check for the data on the components, which is crucial and we don't have uh, an easy way to do right now? It's not even that, but it actually checks for future data. And this is something that normal testing doesn't cover. In this case, it means that you can add a new property. You can make sure that the tests are failing when they need to fail, that upgrading the test to support this new property that you started, it's super simple because you can do all of this with a single line of code. And it's amazing because you can just say, assert that my view model has these components and that's it. So snapshot testing was popularized on iOS by Facebook, by the screenshotting uh, library that Facebook released some years ago. But for me, one of the problems with what it's called a snapshot testing is that much more than that, but people only focuses on a screenshot, on UI testing. But as we can see, and thanks to the guys at Point3, which released this amazing library that we are using, and if you haven't watched any of the videos, like please, go watch them. The videos are amazing and the functional programming tips that they tell us every week help a lot on your day-to-day -day programming. It's not just theory for the sake of theory. So it's super nice and the, the way they do it, it's really nice and understandable. And well, it's one of my favorite shows that I watch every week. Uh, there is gonna be a link on the description for the specific episode that they talk about the snapshot testing. So this library they release allows us to snapshot anything view controllers, views, data, API requests, models. In our case, we're going to be testing our components. The crucial part is that you can test it to any format that you want. So you can snapshot this as an image, which is like usually the screenshot testing that we, we talked about. But also you can just snapshot this as a description text or even as a binary format, whatever you want. Like you are free to create any format, any strategy that you want. Just for you to get an idea, these are all the available snapshots, strategies that there are. So in our case, what I did was create this domain-specific snapshot strategy, which I call components, that help us make it easy because you can just give it a view model and then it's going to match the components against a snapshot. What I'm going to show you now is the screen that I showed you before, how I got from 0 to 100 in just really like a couple of hours. It's interesting because it's it's a simple screen. There is not much complexity, so you don't have to really understand what's our code base or anything like that. It's just on a simple uh, synchronous data. It was interesting because it was a screen that I didn't implement myself, like somebody else on the team implemented. And while they, they were on holidays, I decided, okay, let me add a couple of tests to see how it works and, and play with it. And I was able to, thanks to the test, actually refactor part of that code during that because I didn't have the whole context, I actually forget about a couple of requirements and I broke the test. And the test were there telling me, no, no, you are missing this and you're missing that. It's like, okay, thank you. And all of these with just a line of code, which is amazing. So not only the snapshot testing allowed me to properly test this easily without feeling pain at all, but it also helped me refactor and catch things that I didn't e even realize that I was breaking. So this is the screen in question as I showed you. And this is the bit of code that has some logic for the interactions that I, I am able to refactor and, and change this. And you can see how after some changes from using arrays to sets, I was able to like simplify quite a, a bunch the logic here, which was interesting. So these tests are actually using the snapshot system I was talking about. And you can see how with a single line, I'm actually testing a lot of things here. This is a snapshot of a simple scenario. So basically I have a question with some options that I'm creating. And this is what the snapshot tells me that there are five elements, which is, it's, it's interesting because now we start already getting benefits. Like there is this separator here that it's here, but not between every element. It's the separator is separating what it's the, the question and the description from the answers that you can select. If we think if of what, what we are displaying on the screen, we're like, oh, maybe there are four elements, but this is telling me, no, there are five. The interesting thing is that when you're writing the test, you don't even have to think about that. I agree that it's a different way of testing because you don't have the, the assertions directly there, but it frees you from so much and it gives you so much benefits that it's worth giving it a try. And then the other important thing is that all of this is actually testing the data. So I know that I'm, get, I'm putting the title of the question 
with the correct field that comes from the model from the API and that I'm using the description correctly, that I'm not mixing them. For example, the header, I don't have a header for now, which is something that I need to work on it later. Just with a simple line, I have all these tests that are actually making sure that the mapping between the model and the components is correct and also that the the components that are returned for this screen are correct. This is so much useful testing with just a simple line. One of the things that this screen needs to handle is like the difference between a single choice question and a multiple choice question. For this, I actually can perform some actions direct on the view model that it's going to execute the logic that I was showing a second ago about the view models selecting different answers for a question. And then I can snapshot the state of the view model based on the components strategy after everything I do. And what I guess from this is an initial snapshot after I select one, and you can see that you have is selected true and all the others are false. After I select another one, because it's a single question, the first one becomes false. And then the last one that I select that becomes true. And finally, which is something I broke while I was doing the refactor and this was keeping me safe. And is that if you select again, the same one, it becomes, it flips it to false. You can see that it's really, really easy to write and, and actually quite easy to read. With all of this, I have all the tests that I wanted to have. I have tests for the number of components that this is going to return. I have tests for which type of components this is going to return. I have tests that actually take into account that the separators are there. I have tests that make sure that the data that I'm putting everywhere is actually the correct one. I have tests that is going to check that in the future, when I change something here, it's going to be detected immediately and it's going to be super easy for me to change the test to accept the new, the new requirement without being a burden. And I have tests that check that this logic, which actually changes the state, it modifies the components, it's actually properly done. So basically, I have tests for everything I wanted with just these lines of code, which is so nice. There are more tests here, but that's everything I wanted to tell you. Basically, go to point three, check the snapshot library and think how you can use it on your on your own tests to make them simpler and easy to make. You can obviously watch the video to have some ideas from point free guys directly. And I hope this helps you improve your reading testing and realize that there are more things out there interesting that actually make it so easy to do that we should keep our minds open all the time. Thank you for watching. If you liked, remember to give a thumbs up to this video. And if you want to have more content like this, please subscribe. See you next time.